Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to patch binaries using Radar 2. What this means is you'll be able to modify a program to do what you want. For example, if you have a program that requires a password, you will be able to overwrite its assembly code to gain access without even knowing the password. These examples are very simple, so I'll try to keep you that way. So let's get started. Right here I prepared some files for the video. Two of the files are C code files that I later converted into executables using GCC. And then the last one is a CrackMe which is intended to be reverse engineered and not patched. But since it is a very simple example, I can use it to show you how to make a program do what you want. I of course don't support solving CDF challenges the wrong way, this is just for demonstration purposes and you can use any binary that you prefer. And here are the converted C code files in an executable format. This is the format in which programs usually come and you can analyze them from this point. And yes, don't worry, I'll put the C files on my website so you can compile them yourself using GCC. Before we begin, I'll quickly show you the code of the first two files. First one is just a Hello World app, it prints Hello World world, that's all it does. And the second one just checks for the user input and it compares the pin the user inputted to the key that it has inside of the code. And if it is correct, it will give us the flag, but we don't know what the pin is. So anyways, enough introduction, let's get into patching. Let's run the first executable to see what it does and we can see that it only prints hello world. The second executable asks for input and then the third one asks for the license key, but we'll get to those later. Let's analyze the first one using radar too. So if we want to analyze it and have the ability to rewrite anything inside of it we want to use the w tag. This tag allows us to run it with write ability. Once we ran this we need to analyze the executable. So for this we're gonna use multiple a's or four a's in this case. The more a's the deeper the analysis is. But of course you can specify like 30 of them. Then we can list functions of the program to navigate through the program easier. We can see two functions starting with sim. So these don't really interest us right now since you usually go for the functions that have their own name like entry or main or something like that. And in our case this is the fcn and then the value. We can enter into this function using the s tag which stands for seek. It basically allows you to navigate through the code of the program. And now as you can see our location has changed and now we're at the address ending with 114d. So once we have entered the function we want to see the code behind it, right? Well radar doesn't give you the exact code of the program but it does show us the assembly code but assembly view for us right now is going to be more than enough because we can modify it and the program will still work the way it's supposed to but it's going to be modified and we're going to get what we want as a result. We can use Q to exit out of the view and we can use V to go back in if you want to. I know that this looks confusing right now but don't worry, all you have to do is look at the left segment with the colored memory addresses and then the right part of that segment. This is where radar shows the assembly code. If I move around using the arrow keys you can see that we have a string variable saying hello world. Since we want to modify that as the simplest thing we can do in patching binaries we can click on it and it will lead us to the segment where it is defined. Right here you can see the exact string as well as the length. If we want to modify the easiest way for us to do this is to make sure that we are at its address, which we can see at the top right corner as well as left of the string. So the address we want to be on is the one ending in 2004, then if I press Q our location should be right on that address. You can look for assembly code using slash ad and then writing the assembly code that you want to look for. Or you can look for strings using just slash and then space and then write the string you're looking for. So anyways, let's patch the binary. Let's modify the strings to how we like it. Also try staying within the length, it is a good practice. I've used quotes here which isn't really necessary but it's fine because it works. So press Q to exit and then run the executable now. And as you can see we modified it, we just patched a binary. You modified the text of it and how it prints it out. Now I know this isn't something amazing but just take a look at the second challenge. So let's first run the executable so I can show you how it works. It's gonna ask us for a pin or a password in order to get the flag. So since we don't know the pin, we're just gonna give it to radar and just like we did before with the right parameter so we can modify it and let's run our analysis as usual. So we have to analyze every time, look at the functions and then navigate to a function that we want to. It is a good starting point so we can find other stuff. So we can use AFL to list out the functions and as you can guess, the function that we're interested in is the FCN function. Since it looks like it's the one doing the most work that isn't tied to the system, System or something like that, we will use S to seek or navigate to the function we picked and then we can navigate the same thing in our view mode so you can immediately see that we have a string that says you've just gained root access. So the first step in our analysis is looking at the compare line since it's the one doing the comparing. So you can see this x 9 value which when converted to an integer gives us 603729. Now since I've made the program I know that this is the password so this is the pin that we want to input. We could just make sure that 603729 is always the entry or something but that's not what 
we're looking for. Plus, we won't always be able to see the password just like we see it right now. I'm going to show you a cooler way. So what we want to do is invert the if statement. I know it sounds complicated, but it's really simple. What this means is that the program checks if the user input matches the password. So if I enter potato, does it match the password? And then if it does, it's going to give us root access. If it doesn't, it's just going to say no, right? But if we invert that statement, we can make it that every false password will lead us to the root flag and every correct password. So if I input 603729, it will actually lead us to nice try, try again. This is not the password, right? Now you might think that this is really hard, right? It isn't. All we have to do is change one line. Under the comparison, you can see a line and there's J and E in assembly right there. If a correct value is returned, then this specific line with J and E will lead us to a certain function, right? So a certain part of the code, meaning that our compare line feeds this line with J and E. We can think of it like that. At the left side, you can also see that our addresses have these little arrows and the arrow that interests us is going to be coming from this line main comparison. So in our case, this is the J and E line. And then this arrow goes on to the wrong part, like you, you entered the password wrong. And what we wanted to do is we wanted to go to the good part, to the one printing out the flag where it tells us you've entered the correct password error is just showing us what is going where in what case so if we want to invert this statement all we have to do is change j and e to the opposite of j and e right and it looks like the opposite of j and e is j e you can just google this this is some basic assembly stuff one thing to keep in mind is that we shouldn't change the value. So all we have to do is invert this J and E to J E and that is it. If we change the value, there's going to be some stuff happening and you don't want that. It's going to make your program crash or give you a seg fault or something like that. So in order to write this, we can just press Q to exit out of the view mode and we can navigate to the address that we want to modify using seek. So we can run the WA command, which means write assembly and then just write assembly code after it. So as I said, the value of J and E stays the same, but the condition is going to change. So it's going to be J E. And yes, that also means that if it was JE, you can probably just change it to JNE and it's going to work. So it is the opposite of it. Definitely look into these though, because there is more options. These will definitely be useful for you in the future if you're going to do anything like this. So here's a quick little explanation about JNE and JE. You can read it if you want to. So anyways, now that we've patched our binaries, we can press Q and then exit and run the program. The program still asks us for the password number. And if I enter anything, it should give us the root flag. And we're in. That was awesome. We just got our flag and we patched the binary within a few minutes. And the best part is it was easy enough, right? Let's move on to the third challenge. It's a very similar challenge to the second one, so it should be easy for you to solve. So first, always run the binary to see what comes up. Right there, we can see that it asks for the license to pass in as a parameter. This doesn't make a huge difference for us, but the program itself might be different to analyze. As before, let's run it with radar in write mode and let's analyze it using our A's and then display all the functions using AFL. You can already see that there's a few functions more than the previous one. They're mostly sim functions, so we don't really worry about that. As you can see, the most interesting one for us is obviously main. So let's stick to the main and see what it is inside. So of course, we're going to press V for the disassembly view and we're going to scroll around to see our comparisons. You can already see that the strings are being used and you will soon be able to notice that we can just change our J and E or J E value and basically do the same thing that we did with the last program and get the output that we want to. Regardless of the fact that this one is taking in a license key as a parameter, it's basically the same thing in this case. Now, these are really simple challenges, but you still get the point. So as I said, that's why we're learning this method because we don't want to rely on like making sure that we have the password by looking at it and converting it from 0x to the decimal print out functions again and then just navigate to our main and then after looking into the function with arrow keys and page down and page up we see that we found our string that says premium access have been activated meaning that this is where we actually want to go so if you look a little left you can see that arrows that i was talking about and it points to the access blocked option again so all we have to do is invert the statement that we're looking at right now that the arrow is coming from so we're going to do the same thing that we did before so all we have to do is use the slash wa to write assembly and be navigated on the address where we want to change the values. And this should just give us our premium access. And here we go. Let's quit it and test it out. If we run the program and provide garbage input to see if it works and bam, we have premium access. Easy as that. So I don't know about you guys, but to me, this is pretty awesome. And I hope you understood everything I said. So if you're confused about something, make sure you leave a comment down below and I'll reply. Anyways, that's it for today. And I hope you had as much fun as I did. I was really stunned when I did this the first time I still remember that feeling it was really awesome just you know making the program do what you want so make sure you try this out and I'll put the code of the first two C files on my website and you can give it a go so thank you so much for watching and have a nice day